What's up, everybody? It's uh, Joey with Let's Get Paranormal. We got another episode for you, episode nine. We have a guest on here, which is Kyle. Hell yeah! Got double spooky fingers up. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Oh. Hi. <laughs> My name is Kyle. <laughs> but uh, as you know, Kyle, uh, he's on the other podcast. Hell the, yeah! The Pitch Dark podcast, oh. and he's also one of the ghost hunters. I'm a ghost hunter. I'm a chef. I'm just an all-around kind of guy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, so it does make sense to have him on here because he, he is part of the crew for the paranormal stuff. He's experienced some oh. stuff. Oh, Bro, my balls got dipped <laughs> in the ghost <laughs> pool. Pool what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> That's how you get initiated into the ghost paranormal uh, world, if you guys didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, we get naked and go to the river and we dip our balls twice <laughs> twice <laughs> <laughs> just uh, kidding because there's a lot of people who will probably take that shit seriously no shit like really oh, oh fucking i knew it oh. i know there's ancient rituals oh, oh fucking was it to the north oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so if you guys don't know who i am uh my name is kyle montoya i uh co-host with him on yeah. uh the pitch dark show yeah, yeah the, the whole pitch dark studio thing he yeah. he found it had, like co-founded it with me too yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so you can call me a co-founder i guess i don't know i really don't like to call myself yeah that. We're, yeah we're like i don't know what you'd call like because i don't want to say ceo because that sounds yeah. like we're like like, like pat ourselves co-creators I yeah guess. i don't fucking know yeah of the pitch dark <laughs> show but yeah like we pretty much started this thing from like the ground up yeah yeah because uh-huh. So, yeah. So, if you guys don't know who I am, um, that's who I am. I yeah. do I, I, you guys should know who yeah, he is. Because, like, like, he's, like, uh, like okay. if you go on our thing, he's, like, the first face that's on there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm also known as the chef. Um, mm-hmm. I'm pretty much the main character on uh, Cloud9. Cloud uh, and, yeah. So, if you guys get a chance to check out any more of what the Pitch Dark has to offer, um, you'll see me in a lot of other things. Yeah, and he's actually, like, pretty much, like, him and myself are, we're the ones actually, the Pitch Dark podcast actually started off with just telling ghost stories. Yeah, that's, like, basically what our main consensus of the the podcast was. Um, yeah, like, well, we had, like, like a one day of the week where we just talked about ghost stories. Yeah, because I, yeah. <sighs> we went live, like, three times a week. Yeah, because I remember the first time it was just, like, introducing ourselves, yeah. and then, like, we went into like ghost stories and we had like that was like when we had like a crazy like amount of people watching yeah, it was like 300 viewers at that yeah point. there was this like like ghost story ghost story. i was like what the fuck Hello. i can't keep up well, yeah so like um so this is where basically like the start of um the pitch dark came out was with um like a get to know you and then it yeah. just spiraled into like ghost stories there yeah. and we've always been like fascinated since we were kids I yeah think. like i mean shit like when we get further into it i'll tell a couple of stories of um like your personal experience yeah and of like and it started from a young age it wasn't just like um it just happened recently yeah. kind of it just got me into it you know it, um i've had a paranormal experiences even with this guy yeah for for years when we were kids and then it slowly tapered off, and then now it don't really happen as much as we would like it to, especially because no we yeah. film now. Yeah, I don't know if it's because we're like kids and we're more open or something. I don't know what it is. Yeah, um, I've heard that like so many times that um, like mediums would always say, or people who are in like, I guess you'd say like the paranormal realm always say like the children are always like the closest to where. Um, they can see the like I guess the other side. Yeah. And like <clears throat> I I've always like thought it like I always thought it was true because like um like my little cousins and stuff, like uh. they'd be like laughing and giggling, nobody's around them. Uh. But they're like getting tickled and shit. Isn't that like creepy? Yeah. <clears throat> so it's like I, I, that's like to me is where like I guess I uh, 
where it's kind of like real on a on a sense of where everybody can like be comfortable with it uh-huh. on like um like like some people think of paranormal as being demonic and like yeah. evil and mm-hmm. everything but it comes with everything like it's all it's part of life yeah it's mixed into one yeah like 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 my mom like she get, like she passed away like hopefully she's still around you know yeah. like it's like not always like demonic it's his family yeah know? and not only that but like you you would think like if say uh, your mom didn't get to complete like her life path because yeah. she got sick and such i would hope that like whoever if there's a god or there's a being that controls us after we leave here I hope they allow us to come back and complete what we were yeah. supposed to come back. I hope so. Yeah. Or at least <laughs> get to see like your loved ones still. You know, yeah. like, that would suck if I like had kids or like my my stepkids. If I died early, I couldn't go and check on them. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. That would suck. Yeah. Uh, and like, um, like your kids, of course, but like those people you care about, like yeah. um, friends, yeah. um, shit, even like uh, Enemies, like no, <laughs> uh, like cousins and stuff. Like, I mean, yeah. of course, like. That's one thing like, I always kind of think about is, like, when I get older is, um, or when I die is, like, I hope I get to come back and visit my family yeah. and visit them because, like, um, I don't I don't know. I'm very close to family. I'm a family-oriented person, and, like, no. I feel like if if I were to leave this world and I at least be able to say goodbye, yeah. I'd feel pretty bad. And especially if, like, you died suddenly, you know? I think that's always, cre- like, not creeps me out, but like freaks me out. Like, what if I died early and I get to say anything? You know, yeah. Like where the treasure I hid or something. No <laughs> shit. No. And, and that's like one thing too. Like that's why, like, like the main consensus of us recording each other was like, one day we're gonna die, and then we hope that whoever's there for us or whoever cared about us had, can go back and watch us from the yeah. years and come back and say, hey, like. This is before they die. This is crazy. Oh, no, like, oh, this is like the day he did die. Oh, oh, God, okay. <laughs> like, that's the trip. Like, that's what always like gets me is like, because I, I like to listen to rap and shit. Like, what gets to me is like, well, um, like those rappers who get shot and killed. Yeah. And, and like, wow. like I wonder how like, like what happens after their life in their afterlife. Like meaning like. Mm. Do they just automatically haunt that area? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Or do they go to, like, where they love being yeah, at or exactly. something? Yeah, exactly. Or, like, um, like they're so full of, like, hate and anger to the person that did it to them. Like they are fall they, them yeah, yeah, are they going to follow them? Or, like, yeah. that's always, like, another thing I always thought about is, like, celebrity deaths and shit. Like, yeah. like, um, like, if I were to able to go into, like, Kurt Cobain's area where he yeah, well, you, killed that, himself that and stuff floor, like yeah. that, like, um. Like, I would always, like, want to know, like, what he was feeling. At yeah, that or time. get, like, answers or something. Yeah. You know, like, that's part of what we do, too. Like, just maybe give closure to whoever we're talking to or something. Yeah, and, and like, and to be honest, like, <laughs> we can never fucking prove to the fact, like, when we do the Ouija board or whatever, like, that, that that's the actual fucking person yeah, we, talking to like, us. It's like, it's not, like... Complete science, you know. Yeah. It's not like like oh, it's fact, bro. Yo, it's a one hundred. Oh. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, yeah, but like I've always thought about like okay, so like what if okay, what if by chance we're actually talking to that person? Yeah. If, when we're at their famous place where they died, locations and yeah. such. Like I want to go to the Cecil Hotel, Dude, and fucking cool. do some investigations over there and see oh, what shit. fucking celebrity we run into. Oh shit! You know what? Like, like I wonder like. Sometimes I feel like the spirit box would be more credible because if it sounds like their voice, yeah, because then that would be like kind of like how do I, I couldn't mimic Kurt Cobain's voice? No like, shit. Or like, <laughs> imagine like just like um, like Elvis Presley's voice just yeah. pop up out of nowhere. Yeah, like that. That's like how do you explain that? Like I get it, it's radio frequencies and such like that, yeah. but like. But when it's like complete sentences, yeah, like, like how you the can't, fuck can you explain that? I still don't uh, like it. Freaks me out when you get complete sentences. You're like, how the fuck does that happen? Because it's switching through stations so yeah. fast. There's no way. And it, it's always a trip too, because it's like it's always clear. It's yeah. never like a mumbled sentence. It's always a clear yeah. cut. Like you understand. It's different yeah. voices, but it's a clear understanding of what's going on. It's pretty weird, yeah. Like sometimes you'll get like a full sentence, almost like something just comes out of that static, just like. Yeah. Hi, and then like, hello, what are you, I'm doing, or whatever the fuck, it's like a full sentence over like 10 stations, 
I'm just like, how the fuck? So like the way I ex- like the way I picture um, the spirit box working for me is like you're stationed in the middle and like there's like a tornado going around and like by chance there's a spirit that you'll hear once mm. maybe twice and if you get lucky three times and such and such yeah. but it's never like it's never a consistent like flow of noises or voices it's yeah. always just sometimes like, it is yeah, yeah. like um what, I, what i'm trying to explain is like um what i mean is is it's not like uh like a sea of voices. Yeah, no. It's, it's just, just a bunch of the, like yeah. different noises, and sometimes you'll hear like uh, maybe like a like a part of a song, like a beat yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But like other than that, it's just complete silence. And then when you get or st- complete static, but when you get a full sentence and you you like it's related to the conversation you're having uh-huh. or it's related to the area you're at, then like then how the fuck can you explain that? Like how do you explain that away? Yeah, like it doesn't make sense how it shouldn't work. Where if you're flipping through ten stations, you shouldn't. It should be a jumbled up message. Yeah, it should be like different voices too. Not just like one fucking. Sometimes you'll get like a female voice, and it says it completely like in one sentence. I'm just like, eh. I don't know how to ex- like even say like eh, it's fake. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know what? To be honest with you, like I never thought I'd ever get into the paranormal thing, yeah. because <laughs> I'm. I wouldn't say I, I am. I was one of the most like like traditional per people. I was really like spiritual and shit. And like I don't know what happened. Like I'm <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm I know what happened, but there's there's just no room for me to explain it on the show. But yeah. like ever since that moment, there's always been that like push to do the like the the what's in the shadows kind of work, meaning like. Do the things that is considered taboo. Yeah, like what's weird to other people. Yeah, like I've never ever, like, ever wanted to be like into like normal shit that everybody else is into. Uh. Like you don't see anybody driving around town listening to fucking people talk about scary shit or (laughs) murders. That's why this is a podcast, bro. That's all I do too. Like I don't even like sometimes like when I'm in a rush, I'll jam to music because it's like okay, I don't gotta pay attention to what they're saying. But like when I'm on my way here, yeah, I'm jamming the podcast because like not only will it give me something to talk about, but it gives me structure to like kind of get a like um, a feeling of what the day is going to be like or how the conversation is going to go throughout the day and like like to go back to it i i never really thought um from being like a little kid never thought i'd ever be interested in chasing after the the things that scare me (laughs) like um like a perfect example would be like um there's so many ghost stories I fucking got. Like, oh, when you were younger. Yeah, yeah like. <clears throat> yeah, so like, tell, tell us like like the one that pops in your mind the first. Like the the most. Yeah, like what like right when you think about right now, <laughs> what comes to your mind first? Okay, so uh, I, I've told you this plenty of times, yeah. but those two you don't know. Um, there is this one night where it was just like a vivid dream of like. Uh, it was real lucid, like I. I don't, I, I can't, to this day I can't explain it yeah. I can't say if it was real or not Because There was feeling There was smell and there was taste yeah, It's involved. almost all your senses Yeah man. so like I can't explain that away I, I, I couldn't explain the reality of it away So like what happened was I woke up in the middle of the night Because I got to take a piss so bad So I got up and I I was a kid maybe like I'm say nine years old, okay, and I at that point I was a fucking bitch. Like I'm not gonna lie, like I was scared <laughs> of fucking everything. Yeah. And I just remember walking out into the hallway, and the hallway was dark. Everything was dark, yeah. so I flip on the the bathroom light so I have light. Yeah. But as soon as I Dude, your hallway so creepy. Yeah. Fuck out at night. Okay, this is the crazy shit. So when I open when I turn on the light in the bathroom. I hear shuffling on the left side, and on the left side, like directly across the bathroom, is the laundry room. And in the in the laundry room, the shadow f- or the light from the bathroom is peeking into the, the the laundry room. But in the corner, there's a basket in front of the corner, and there's like maybe about six inches of, of room between the wall and the basket. Mm. But I could see something looking at me. 
and it, and then all of a sudden, like it moves and it moves purposely to where I can see it. Oh, like pokes its head. Yeah, out. it's a doll. Okay, oh, it's a little oh. doll. Like what kind of doll? Like, <sighs> like uh, just a like a raggedy Ann doll or a porcelain <sighs> doll or. Uh, I've never really said it out loud. Like, and, and I never I really yeah, said I it to... I don't think you ever told me what it looked like. <laughs> okay, so, like... Uh, um, I, I don't know if anybody's ever seen this movie, Primitive Fear. Oh, shit. Okay, okay so yeah. it kind of looked like that, plus a Kachina doll. Huh. And so, so and this, the reason why it's so, like, scary to me and so significant is, like, it touched me. I remember you telling me. And the crazy thing is, like... After like I touch it touches me like I could taste like salt, That's weird. like it tastes salty in the air, huh. and then it stinks like shit. Yeah. So like there was your three senses right there. Like yeah. it touched me, I tasted it and it smelled. It. Yeah, and he saw it. Yeah. yeah, and I saw it. Yeah. But the crazy thing is, and I cannot explain this shit away. So how what did it do? So it poked its head out. And I then... poked its head out, and then right as soon as I turned on the lights. I want to say the bathroom window was open. And it was a small window. Like yeah, it, it's like a little shower window. Yeah, it's window. like a little square. Yeah. yeah. So as soon as I op- oh, turned on the light and it peeked out, it like saw its opportunity to jump out the window. Huh. So it ran and it, like literally it ran. Like, like across the hallway? Like picture a stick. Sticks running. Yeah. That's, that's basically what I can say. Sticks running across the hallway. And it, it has like, I don't know what the fuck it has in its hand. But it touches me. And it, like, swipes me. And I can feel it swipe me. And, like, the crazy thing is, like, it jumps out the window. And I take a piss. I turn off my light, the lights. And I go to bed. And I'm like, Holy did that really fucking happen? Surprised you didn't, like, piss yourself. Yeah, like, uh, did that really fucking happen? Like, uh, I can't explain it. Like, I to this day, I still don't know if I was dreaming or not. That's pretty fucking creepy. Yeah. And it's like, what, the way you describe the doll is fucking... Like, I'm going to put the... Picture of what that dog is. Like. Primitive fear, yeah, exactly. Like that, like mixed in with some like, like I don't know, like Native American like right. stuff we have here in New Mexico. Yeah. Like, because like, I'm Native and we see that shit. Yeah. Like, it's whatever. That's pretty creepy. Yeah, but like that was like probably where like the most like the the dream that I've I've always thought about the most because it's like or. I don't know if it was a dream or not. I can't explain. <laughs> but the experience I had is that's the first thing that pops into my head because I've been called a liar uh, by plenty of people by tell because I tell that story. You told me that before, and I think you told it on the podcast like a long time ago. Oh yeah, yeah. probably guaranteed. Like, yeah. there's no there's no way I didn't tell that story. Yeah. But like I like I said, that's the first time I gave an actual pure pure example of what I saw. Yeah, I, don't I never think, said yeah. it before. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty. Did it like hop on the, like the tub or and then jump out? So what it did was it ran us, ran towards me, touched my leg, then it hopped onto the like the ledge of the bathtub. Did it like pull itself up? Yeah, and then it jumped up to the, you know how we have that that corner part in the shower with the, the caddy. Oh yeah, yeah. And it would jump up and it would go in there. Oh what the fuck! And then it jumped out the window. That's creepy. Yeah. So it, like jumped that way and then. Yeah, it yeah. it literally. Like climbed a way up like a ladder. So it like out. made sense the way it did it. It did just like 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 cartoonish. Like no, yeah. no, I didn't just jump up yeah, magically, yeah. fucking six feet in the air to get out. No, that's it pretty, literally climbed up itself. With that's so. pretty creepy. Yeah. Speaking of dolls, huh? oh oh shit, no, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, see, like, but these things don't. The ones that scare me the most, are the ones that have the eyes that open. That open and close. I almost bought yeah, one. Yeah, and a porcelain doll. Those ones probably freak me out the most. It was weird. Um, actually, we were just at the antique store <laughs> yesterday. Where we picked this one up. I didn't really feel any of this one. I just thought it looked creepy. Yeah. But um, it's a it's a it's a vintage Pinocchio doll. That's what it is. That looks scary as fuck. Dude, his eyes look like they're like always looking at you or something. But um, there is uh there is an area in the fucking building. I went to this area. They had like a bunch of like toys and stuff. And there's a glass case, and I instantly got dizzy. Yeah. Like I was like, whoa! I was like, I feel weird right here. I was like, which one is it? And then my eyes connected with this little doll. I was like, it's you. And then I went to get Jimmy, because she it's always says she's like more yeah. sensitive. I was like, "There's something in that corner." I felt really weird. And she went in there. She like instantly. She was like, "That one," and pointed right at the same doll I was looking at. I was like, "Yeah, that was the one I was thinking." 
I was like, should we get it? I was like, no. <laughs> I was all fuck that. Luckily, it was in a glass case. But yeah, it felt weird. Like, I don't know. It was like the first like time. That, that's the number one thing, folks, is if it's behind a glass case, yeah. leave its ass there. <laughs> no shit. So don't take it out. Like, especially <laughs> if it's like, if it's dated and old and like, and especially if it comes with a story. Like, yeah, yeah. Or if you just feel weird around it, yeah. you know, uh, you should get like a weird feeling off of it already. Like, like, uh, yeah. like they say, trust your gut. Yeah. Like, that feeling is so tremendous. You should not be able, like, it yeah. should not pass you. Yeah, never deny your your, your instincts. Yeah. Because, yeah, like, there's sometimes we just, even when we're going something, like, we're like, something's weird right here. Yeah. Like, you just feel something enter the room or something. You ever get like that when we're ghost hunting? Like, you just feel like something's there? It's, only, it's always when we set up. It's never, like, actually when we're recording or anything. It, it is. It's like yeah. they will hide or something. Yeah. yeah. It's like... When we were when we we're doing the setup, like initial setups and stuff, like they're it's always like they're running around with us. Yeah, like they're watching. Like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. Why are you Why are you putting that there? Yeah. Uh-huh. And then like when we start, it's like, okay, go go to bed. Go. Yeah. Like, oh shit! They're ghost. Yeah. They're, they're ghost police. Fuck. Oh, <laughs> the Huda's here. Oh, yeah. Because sometimes like when we go there, I the first thing I say is like, we're not here to get rid of you. Yeah. So like you can show up. We're not here to get rid of you. We just want to know who you are. And that's yeah. it. Just so they don't go hide, you know, because we are considered the ghost police. Yeah. Like they're the, like these are the guys that get rid of us, you know. Yeah. It's like we're not really the, that team. <laughs> So, so like going back to like stories and shit, man. Like, I have so much from when we were younger, dude. Like, like the one, another one that freaks me out a lot is like um, there was one night. I don't know why the bathroom was like one of the biggest things that ever like went off, but like um, I had broke my arm, um, like maybe two thousand four. Was this a trampoline? Two thousand four. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I had broke my arm, and the way it happened was just so stupid. Okay, so the the day before. The initial breaking of my arm, I slept over with my cousins, and and we decided that morning we were gonna wake up and put soap all over the fucking <laughs> the mat of the uh, and jump and just have a fun day and just get yeah. all cleaned up, yeah. jumping whatever. So we did that, and then everything was gravy. We went home. They went home. We thought we washed it off enough, and so then the next day we were jumping. We were having like a wrestling match. And I just remember Lyle just diving onto my back, and I was trying to get up. Yeah. And all I just hear is like, oh, and then like shit. just fucking pain, 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 and like. So I had broke my arm, and um, you know, like I don't know, you know how you wrap your arm and shit, like yeah. you have to cover it and stuff. So I I had uh, I had it wrapped up, and I was already in the shower at this point, yeah. and I was washing my hair. And the reason why it's this is important to tell you is because I'm using this hand. Yeah, okay. The, other the, one's yeah, the window's over here. Okay. I'm using this hand. And then all of a sudden I just catch somebody walk by. Yeah. And it and the crazy like the, the cra- it's at night and I had the window open, which being native a young kid I shouldn't have. And like the side of your house is there's it's not like an entryway to your no, yard. It's uh-uh. just it's just like between the two houses. Yeah, it's like literally like between the two houses is just a walk an alleyway for um like to go to the Royals. Like, yeah, there's nothing that should be walking. No. Yeah. So um um anyway, so I see somebody walk by. And the reason why I say somebody is because I see a head and then I see a shoulder. So pretty close to the window? Yeah, and yeah. the reason why I know it's a shoulder is because it was like a jacket. It was like a black jacket like this, and it had two stripes going down like that. Yeah. So at this time, Preston, um, like one of my Adidas cousins. Jacket? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of, yeah. yeah. But at this time, my cousin Preston was living with us. Yeah. Um, there was some stuff going around, going on, and so he just decided to live in, live, move in with us. So I had assumed that Preston had took off to Lauren's house and the way they used to go is he used to just walk out the front and then go through the Royals because the cops were dicks back in the day. Yeah, they'd be like, Corfu and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So they would just he would just walk that way. So when I got out of the shower, he was sitting in the living room and I went up to him and I, go, Boom. I punched him in his arm. I was like, you fucker. You scared me. He's like, what are you talking about? I was like, you walk by the window and you scared the fuck out of me. And like, it was like not even pure instincts. He just got up and grabbed the poker and ran outside. That's weird. Yeah, like he just ran outside him and Tiana, and it was like, like, I didn't even like he didn't even tell me like, hey, like, I wasn't outside or nothing. He huh. just got up and ran. So then they come back in and they ask me if I'm alright and everything. And I'm like, yeah, why? And then the person was like, I haven't gone nowhere. 
What the fuck? And I was like, are you fucking serious? And he's like, yeah. I was like, I could have sworn you just walked by the fucking the bathroom window. Absolutely. He was like, no, I didn't walk nowhere. Huh. I was like, I've been here this whole time. Me and Tana been in the, in the living room. Huh. And, Ty, and Ty, Tana was at the computer at that time. And he's a like, haunt Ty. Ty was like, yeah, he's been sitting here watching MTV. That's weird. And that's, that's, like, that's an old yeah, sentence. Dude. <laughs> that's an old sentence. Yeah, dude. I was like, what the fuck, dude? Like, uh, and, you know, I'm just freaking out, bro. Like, what the fuck did I see? Oh, shit. Yeah, so a mimic, pretty much, right? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Possibly, because I, I, I really don't, like, I didn't really get to look at the person. Like, yeah. I didn't get to fully see, like, if it was Preston or not. Yeah. I just blamed him because that that's what he was known for doing, is walking yeah. on the side of the house. Yeah. To go to the Royals. It's pretty weird, though. Yeah. Especially at night. Like, that's like a... Yeah, because... Like, yeah, because you had a, still had a fence, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. No? No, 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 no. This is before pre-fence. Oh, okay. Pre-fence. <laughs> pre-fence days. Pre-fence arrows. Oh, uh-huh. that's, good. Uh-huh. that's pretty weird. Yeah, because that's... The area of your house, that's like a weird... And why walk that close to the house? Yeah, too, like... If you're, what? like, trying not to be seen. No, you know? shit. Like, yeah. why walk right in front of the window with yeah. the lights going to beam you? Yeah. Oh, shit. And so, like... Like uh, that was pretty much like literally what happens when I when I was a little kid. It's like I'd always have ex- like vivid dreams or these like out of body experiences. I guess I don't know how to fucking explain that one. And then the I seen things. And then yeah. like the like the 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 reason why born in East LA will always have like a special place in my heart is because that is the first time together me and you we saw a ghost. Yeah. And <laughs> this is the weirdest ghost I've ever seen, like, to think about. But it was a dog. Yeah. A little chihuahua kind of dog. It had pointy ears yeah. and red fucking eyes. Yeah, that was weird. And it would, and the reason why, like, the, the, he talks about the hallway being the scariest is because any time we'd ever see a spirit, it always come out of that hallway. Yeah. And it, the hallway, like, your house was set up kind of weird. Yeah. Like, um, so you go through the front door. And it was like living room, and then to your right, it was like a separate hallway that went all the way around the house. Yeah. And then like you would it's end like up in the U, kitchen. Yeah. You ended up in the kitchen, which is really strange. I never really old houses are built like that over there. Yeah. I never. I don't think I ever seen houses built like that anywhere else. No, and, and like the, um, so like the crazy area was more like towards the front room and the living room area around, yeah. or not the living room, laundry room area around there, but um. You know, I just remember watching that board in East L.A. and we were laying on the couch and then I remember you, like, freaked out and you hit me. You're like, do you see that over there? I'm like, what? And then I fucking see the eyes and then I see the ears. I'm like, you see a dog over there? And you're like... It didn't move. It just, uh-uh. like, stared at us. Yeah, and you're like, that's what exactly what I saw. And I was like, holy fuck. Like, it never... It, it just moved. It never made a noise. It just moved forward and moved backwards. It never, like... Yeah. Like it never did anything else but that. But you could see its ears. You could kind of sort of make out of a head shape. Yeah, it was mostly like a silhouette with yeah. red eyes. Yeah, yeah. and it yeah. Was, that's the trippy thing. It was like that was the, probably the first time I've ever seen like, and and I actually can say somebody witnessed it with me. It yeah, was it just like because the dogs you had didn't look anything like that nah, at the time. They were pugs. Yeah, they were yeah. pugs. They didn't have pointy ears. No, nah, fuck no. And th- that's like one of m- multiple fucking times like. Yeah, there was one where we saw like a, a head or something. Yeah, like, oh dude, it was that was bou- creepy. Yeah, it was bouncing out of the fucking, like picture Digimon when they were when they were baby Digimon yeah. thingies, like bouncing around. Just picture that oh, with hair and look nasty. See that? Yeah, it looked like a severed head with like long hair, and it came out like at first it like rolled, yeah. like and then it started like jumping or yeah. something, and then it rolled. It looks so cr- yeah. disgusting. It yeah, looked- like that'd be a cool ass fucking like part of a movie if we can re- recreate that. Oh, it fucking creeped me out. I, I remember that shit. And then, like, um, I remember that one night we built a fort in front of the TV. That one was and, probably one of the scariest like, ones. without a paddle, dude. And then, like, I just, was it, no, no, no. What happened was, fucking, was it Blanca? Yeah. Well, so I spent the night at Kyle's house, and we, he had a big screen TV, one like of those old ones. Yeah, those big heavy backs. fucking things. And we had two chairs. And we put um, um, blankets over them and over the TV and made, like, a fort. And, like, there was only, like, one, like, the well, the side entrance is like this. And then bet- where the, the chairs were sitting, we had an entrance in yeah. there in the court that was open. And, yeah, we are watching without a paddle. Yeah. Because the TV was, like, right fucking there. And then we had the, yeah, was it Blanca? I think it was. Dude, that's a long time Blanca was around, man. 
Yeah, because she was in there with us. I think so. Yeah. I think it was her. It had to. Cause it, it was a dog. Yeah. I know that. It yeah. was one of our dogs. But uh, anyways, we were fucking watching that without a paddle. And then all of a sudden you hear, I think it was at that point where they're actually in the weed farm where they're getting shot at. I think so, yeah. Because then that's when we heard the dog scr- like screech and then run into the <laughs> to the little fort we made. And then it just passed out between my legs. Like It was like... That was weird. Yeah, it, was, it started yapping and yeah. then it just like it cried like it got hit or something. Yeah. And then it ran in and then this there and this went dead asleep. Yeah. And you even tried moving him, right? Yeah. Or and her. It, yeah. And then she didn't budge or nothing. I can't remember what. Dog like almost was. like she was like like dead or yeah, something. Yeah. Like the only thing like that made it like know that she was still alive was that she was breathing. Yeah. Like breathing hard, like <laughs> like yeah. how dogs when they get like fucking stressed or like overworked or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty fucking weird. And then like. So, like, we just, like, freaked out, and then all of a sudden we looked down to the left where that other hole in the middle was, and then, like, uh, the best thing to see it is if you've ever seen the, if you've, if anybody's ever seen the village. That's exactly That's what exactly was. what we saw was, like, the hanging hand with the fur. The claws. Coat yeah, thing. Yeah. And it wasn't, there's was no feet. It was floating. Yeah. I remember you were, like, looking at the dog, and then you were looked at me, and I looked. I don't know what made me look through the opening of the tent, and I just saw it go by with like its claws, and I remember looking at you, and my eyes just filled with tears. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Did Dude, you it was that? scary, bro. Yeah, fucking a. Like, I I don't blame you. Yeah, I really don't blame you. That was a scary time. Like, in all honesty, that was probably like, at least I was with somebody yeah. at that point. Like, I, like I, I really thought something was gonna like eat us or something yeah, or like kill shit. us. Yeah, and then. I don't know why we got brave enough to turn the lights off, get out and turn the lights off. Yeah, like we was, just yeah. booked it and fucking turned on all the lights. And nothing was there. Yeah, no, and like, it's a weird experience. There was a smell yeah. of like like an animal. Yeah, a smell, yeah, like, yeah, like fur. Like like when, a wild animal, yeah. Yeah, like the best, like the best explanation I can say is it smelled like an elk. Yeah, like kind of like, yeah, like, like pungent smell, yeah. yeah. Almost like a wet, raunchy animal or yeah, something. Yeah, like, um, like the best way to, to say is like, think of a wet, soppy towel and uh, like a some dog, dog shit. Yeah, dog shit, like yeah. a wet dog, I guess too. Yeah, yeah and you mix it all together. Yeah. That's the smell of, of like an animal. You yeah, it was like lingering in the room when yeah. we turned the lights on. I remember. And like that's honestly like, that's probably the like the last time as a kid like. I would say like after 13 yeah. or before 13 that's yeah. probably like the last time I've ever saw anything in the house yeah. with you yeah because nothing happened in, when they rebuilt the house right mm, not that I know of honestly yeah. I don't really know because I mean the f- <laughs> those years I was living there <laughs> I was pretty fucked up like I was drinking all the time and oh, shit yeah. so I was like I don't really know senses were numbed yeah <laughs> pretty much and then like um like, I, I told this story plenty of times. I'm pretty sure I told it, like, just recently on the podcast. But, uh, the, uh, where, where I don't know if I stepped on a oh, spirit yeah. or if I stepped on a dog or if I stepped on something demonic or what the fuck I stepped on. There was someone else that had the same story that put a story in the comments that was yeah. almost similar to yours. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll have to look for it, but yeah. But you want to tell that one? Yeah, the I mean, one? so, like, just, the, the, like, I'll give you a rough sense of because I don't bore people with it, but, um, so it was, like, it was at night, it was sleeping in the front room, and what I mean by the front room is, I used, there was three rooms that I slept in in the house, I didn't, this is embarrassing, but I didn't get out of my mom and dad's room until I was, like, 12, <laughs> 13. Yeah, well, it's not your fault, because, like, you, you had three siblings that had the rooms already. Yeah, so, like... Um, and then the other room wasn't built yet. No, so yeah. it was just like okay, like I, I, I was forced to stay with my mom and dad <laughs> in the room. Not really, but I was kind of a really mama's boy when I was doing that. I got lie. But um, I, I finally got probably it was probably a few years in the front room. Um, this is when we started. I want to say this is like right before we started strangulation and shit. Yeah. So this, this is like the room, like so the hallway, and this the first room on your right. Yeah. yeah. Like right as soon as you turn that little left but um <clears throat> anyways i was sleeping with my back towards the wall and the wall that i was sleeping against had the window and pretty it was a pretty window. big window yeah. yeah so um um anyways i had my back towards against it and i had woken up because i needed to pee 
But at that moment, I heard like something clinking. Like the best way I can explain it is if you ran your fingers through a chain link fence. That's oh. exactly what it was. And that's pretty far from that window. Not gonna lie, like that's yeah, like that window's facing the street. At least 20, yeah. 30 yeah. feet yeah. away. I think from, so. Yeah. yeah, from the window. So it'd be pretty deliberately like making the sound. Yeah. So, uh, so the the noise was going on, and then all of a sudden it gets quiet. Don't think nothing of it. So then I go and I sit up and I stand up. And when I put my foot down to stand up, when I stand up, I step on my dog. And the, the crazy thing is when I, I, I'm stepping down, I feel it, I hear it. And then, so I freak out and I jump back on the bed. She cries, I, right? Yeah, yeah, because I don't want to hurt her if yeah. she's on the bed or on the floor. But what made me realize something was going on was that when I s- laid back on the bed, she, the, my dog was there. Blanco was there oh, on so the bed cool. with me. So whatever I stepped on on the floor wasn't wasn't supposed to be there, or I wasn't supposed to step on it, and yeah. freak it out, whatever I did. But <clears throat> after I stepped stepped on the dog, heard the yelp, and lay on the bed, I realized Blanco was still on the bed with me. That's when I feel like somebody's staring at me from behind this was the first time i've ever gotten sleep paralysis okay and i i can i can i can't tell i can't really fully say if it's sleep paralysis because i was awake yeah because yeah yeah, because you're already awake something happened then something just yeah like i literally went like i went stiff and like i couldn't yell i couldn't call for help i couldn't move because i felt like it felt like like if all the world's gravity was on top of me at one time and it was just like it was so impossible to move like even your eyes were probably like my moving my eyes was probably straining yeah to move so i feel something there and then i see the shadow coming from the the window and you see long hands like a hand with long fingertips about this long come out that's crazy yeah and like you can hear it kind of like scratching a little bit on the glass and i'm like fuck like what's going on no 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 no. so then i'm just like so in shock that i i'm it feels like 40 minutes have gone by but i don't i I couldn't tell you what how long it was so and then all of a sudden i just get like this 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 is the moment you got and if you don't take it you're not going so I just rolled off the bed and I ran inside and I stayed in the living room. And I never went back in the room that night. I just, I said, yeah. fuck it. And that's that, to this day, I still don't know what dog I stepped on on the floor. Yeah, because I remember you telling me, like, like, I'm not sure if Blanco was really on the floor or or something else was in the bed with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I don't know who or what was. Yeah, where. Like which one was the yeah. real one? Yeah. Exactly. Like, I don't know. And the crazy thing was that when I. Stepped on the dog, you would expect the fucking... If Blanca was truly on the bed, she would have freaked out. Yeah. So, I, I don't know which one was real. <laughs> yeah. So Luckily, like, I got a time machine. Oh, I got you. I just rewind. Fuck that, dude. I would not want to go back to that time. Just because, that night, no? Yeah. You just wake up? <laughs> oh, that'd be scary shit. I, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know what I would do. If uh, we snap back into like a different reality, like we just woke up and we were at like that point in our lives, that'd be weird. No, like, still remember everything, like yeah, from like, like what you went through. Fuck, like, that'd be pretty creepy. Like, it suck if you end up in the spot where you don't, we don't, you didn't like that time. Yeah. I guess. No shit, like that was like probably like the worst times of our lives, kind of shit. Yeah. yeah. Like I, I, I don't know. Like honestly, it was probably like it was okay for me then, but. I don't think I would want to. I don't really want to experience that shit again because not being able to move and not being able to say anything is probably the scariest uh, feeling ever. That's weird because I don't know if you could call it sleep paralysis. It's just like, because like, that's weird that you're awake and all of a sudden you just like went into that mode. That's yeah, like like strange. I'm not even lying to you. That's like strange. straight. Yeah. Like straight jacket straight. Yeah. I wonder what the fuck. That's weird. Like hmm. uh, you can't because I can't label it sleep paralysis because I'm, I'm I didn't wake up and it was there. Yeah, like you. Yeah, because usually that's how people are. They like sleep and they wake up and they can't move. Yeah. And then usually their eyes are free roaming. Yeah. But that's like my like it, it was like painful for to move my eyes. Like, yeah. It just like 
I don't know if it was just tiring or if it was just because whatever was there was forcing me to stay where I needed yeah. to stay. So what, what's another thing is that your story it doesn't match up with other sleep paralysis either. So, so like, I think it was something else. I think something was controlling you or something. Yeah. Because you ever seen like sleep paralysis stories? It's always a shadow man, dude. Okay, so, or an old hag. So like, I'm not even bullshitting you. I've had, I've seen the shadow man. He's yeah. got a top hat. Yeah, that's the like, yeah, the hat man is what yeah, they call him. Yeah, like yeah. I've seen him before, and that yeah. was when I was like 14, 15, yeah. and this is when I thought I was just really high on weed, and I yeah. thought I was just seeing people. <laughs> but no, I, it was like I woke up and saw the hat man in the corner. That's pretty. Cool. And all he did was go like that. And then the, there was nothing else after. That was, there weird, was nothing just like, there. Huh, hello. Yeah, like a salute, like yeah. good morning, like top yeah. of the morning to you kind of shit. <laughs> That's pretty weird. Yeah. I remember yeah. Cameron had the same thing. It was like a guy with a hat. Yeah. Like, he said his had like a trench coat or something. Yeah, it's like, it's yeah. it, like how can I, like. Like almost like Jack the Ripper, like, like silhouette. Picture like early 30s, early 20s, like, yeah. you know how like, but, uh, Bugsy and all them would walk around like picture yeah. like suits like that sharp, yeah, high shoulders stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. like yeah, that's like how you can picture that like that like that yeah. entity. The one that creeps me out the most is the the sleep paralysis stories about the old hag. Yeah. It's about an old woman that comes towards you and then she like sometimes she just stares into your eyes. Fuck that! Like right in your face. Yeah, uh-huh. it's like the most creep like homeless looking woman. Is that the one that sits on your chest. Yeah. Oh, or, okay. Yeah, she'll sit on you and just look in your eyes. Like, ugh, that creeped me the fuck out. Like, and know. what always, like, creeps me out about hearing, like, about old, old people or old ladies' stories is, like, those two stories you told me about when, when you would tell me about Michelle's fucking, oh, her guests, her, her little thingy. Yeah. And then when you. Because she didn't have sleep paralysis. No, uh-uh, because that was, that was legit. You were communicating with that spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Just fucking tell yeah, me how okay. well. I, I fucking forgot. So my girlfriend at the time, so I don't know. She was kind of like going through stuff. I don't know. Like, so she lived with her mom and she had a room. But one time she told me, it was out of blue, out of the blue. She just like randomly told me that she was like, yeah, when I was a, a little girl or not even a little girl, she said it still happened sometimes. Like she would be sitting in her room and her closet door would open and this old lady would come out and come sit on the edge of her bed and then just stare at her. And she said she'd be like in the corner of the bed just trying to get away from her like as far as she could. And then she would sit there for like, I don't know, she said it just felt like forever because it's like you're scared, you know. And she said, yeah, and then she'd eventually sit up and then go back in the closet and close the door. And that was what she would do every other night. And I was like, what the fuck? That is fucking weird. Yeah. And that freaked me out because I was like, that's creepy as fuck. I, I never heard stories like that. Usually the sleep paralysis, they can't move and shit. But this lady would yeah. come out. and she, Oh, yeah, she said that she would, like, mumble, like, to herself. Sometimes she would even look at her, she said. She would just sit there and just stare forward and just kind of mumble. She never could have really understand what she was saying because she was, like, saying under her breath. And then, so that was happening. And then... I remember I was at her house one time and I think we were just watching like TV or something and then she got up and then she went to the restroom and I was sitting there and I just realized like damn like almost an hour went by like what the fuck and I, I was like what is she doing and I walked to the bathroom and I go in there and she's just staring into the mirror not moving at all Holy shit. yeah she's not staring or not she's just staring at herself and I'm like Hey, like, you all right? You've been in here for like an hour. Are you, What are you doing? Why are you staring at yourself like that? Like, And she wouldn't move. She was like completely still. And then I finally, like, right before, like, I, I touched her, she, like, snapped out of it. She's like, and she just started screaming at me, huh. like, yelling at me, telling me off. Let me get the fuck out. And she was like, she went into the kitchen, was throwing pots and stuff at me. And just, like, flipping out. And I was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And then she just, like, sat on the floor and started crying. And then she didn't remember anything that she was doing. What the fuck? Yeah, she was like, what happened? I was like, you were throwing shit at me. Like, you were staring at yourself in the fucking mirror. And that's when she told me about the old lady. Uh. And then she told me about this other thing that lives there that controls her sometimes. Uh. I was like, what? Like a black shadow thing. Uh. She told me about some shadow man is what she said that tells her what to do sometimes. And 
And then that kind of like made me feel weird. And then I started openly talking to whatever was in there. I was like, well, you better leave her alone. Like, you're not allowed here anymore and stuff like that. Just kind of like talking straight to it. Mm-hmm. And it did get weird in there. Like, kind of like got like heavy. And then I got into my car. I was leaving. I think I was leaving or something. And then I felt something in the back of my car. And I looked in the mirror and I saw like the shadow of a person and I knew it was that thing. And I was like, I told you, you're not allowed here no more. Like get away. Like she's not yours. You don't own somebody. And then I felt like the, the car like shift, like, like it was adjusting itself. It was getting closer. And I was like, you're not allowed here. I'm not afraid of you. Get, get the fuck out of my car. And then it just like faded away in the mirror or something. And then, yeah, that was, that was weird. I forgot about that. Yeah, and like that, like that story, and then when you told me about how you saw this lady that looked like my auntie, like coming out of your fucking backyard. Oh yeah, that was fucking weird yeah. too. Yeah, um, uh, it was me and my mom. It was, I didn't see this by myself. It was my mom actually saw her. Um, we were, what were we doing? I think we were just, I don't know if we're cleaning or watching something. But I remember we were in the living room because we had that L shaped couch, and the TV was like in that weird corner area where the door is. And uh, I was sitting there, and my mom was sitting, like, on the other side of the couch. And it's, like, an L shape, so I'm, like, kind of can see my mom. And then there's the window right here on the side of the house. Sitting there, and I was like, Mom, who's that? And he could, because it was the middle of the day. So you could see, like, someone passing towards, passing the window, because, like, you would see the sunlight behind them. And you could see their, their silhouette. And it looked like an older woman, like, with, like, a, like a, like a, like a, like a blanket, like a native blanket. And she was, like, kind of, like, slowly walked past the window. And I was, like, what the fuck? Because you can even see, like, her hair. It was, like, t- like tied back. And yeah. you can see, like, her nose. And she was, like, what? He saw somebody. I was, like, yeah, like, someone's, someone just went, like, towards the backyard. She was, like, what? And then she looked towards, like, the, the back window where the kitchen was. And that was facing the backyard. And then she, sure enough, he saw her walk by. And she's, like, what the fuck? She was, like, why is, why, why is, like, why is she said her name you know i was like why is she in our backyard i was like is that the neighbor across she's like yeah like maybe she's like i don't know like seeing if you were home or something or like yeah or, or losing it yeah or she maybe she doesn't know what she's had or something or she thinks this is her house and uh yeah because that the back window the blinds were open so you could it was like a red blanket yeah and you can see like her white hair and it looked kind of like her yeah and then she went back there and then she was like in our backyard and then she started like putting something in the ground and then she walked off and then she like kind of like disappeared i don't know i don't even think we even saw her go back across or anything and uh yeah and then that was weird and i think i don't know who my mom told but they're like no that wasn't her and so it was really weird yeah i I remember that day that was really creepy (laughs) (laughs) and yeah i've always like um i've always thought about those two stories um, any, anytime, like, I think about, like, scary shit and like that, like, to me, it's not like, um, it's not like in a, like a poltergeist experience. Yeah. It's like you're actually seeing something. Yeah, it didn't look like, like a ghost. It looked yeah. like an actual person. Yeah. yeah. That was pretty weird. And I remember we always see, like, shadows, like, on the, our chain link fest in the back. Like, you would just see, like, a shape of a person and it would just, like, disappear. Yeah. Right? It's really weird. Yeah. And, like, um... For some reason, I don't know why, like, like our old house, everybody got injured. And, like, uh. Rico, for some reason, his ankles would always get taken out. <laughs> Grandpa's always cutting himself or something. I remember that, like, the old house. Yeah. Uh. Like, uh, like, it was just, like, such a, like, a bad experience there. Like, um, those of you who, like, stayed with us or lived with us, you guys don't really know. Like, oh, sorry. No, no, like, you, don't get to, you didn't get to experience the full experience. But... <laughs> um, like, I, I wonder if, like, whatever was in that house is what what made everybody so hostile to each, towards each other. Maybe, yeah, because it, it does affect people's moods. Like, yeah. I mean, I wonder if that, like, was what made my mom and dad want to go to the casino all the time instead yeah. of hanging out with us. Yeah. Or, like, why, you know, my sister was an asshole to me sometimes. Because if it does try to get the parents away, like, it's like, oh, the kids are more vulnerable. Yeah. You know, like. And, like, the crazy thing, too, is, like, I don't really tell this story because uh, I don't know if it's real or not. Like, I, I feel like it's a dream, too, like, but 
There was one time where my mom and dad were at the casino, and it was about like eight or something. And for some reason, my auntie Bob called and just told us not to be looking outside because it's dark. Yeah. So Tana was like, "Okay, we won't like, like we weren't doing it yeah. anyways." So yeah. like, I don't know why we would do it now. Yeah. So then, <laughs> stupid me, I look out, and I see a fucking like a how, how can I like say like you just see this part of me without a head. Yeah. And, and it's just this part balancing a ball, like a basketball. Yeah. That's what I saw when I looked the out. What the fuck? Yeah. Like in the front? Like a half body, no head. Yeah. But no, it was walking up the street. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah. And this is when, uh, you remember how that there was that one lap by Manuelitas, my Uncle Victor's house? That one, that was the only street light we had? Yeah. Well, you see, that's the only reason why you see it is because it's like the, the light shine is glistening off the ball and the yeah. sneaker. It's only one sneaker. And That's it's weird. like, you just see it going up and then the ball bouncing up and then ball bouncing. That's it was weird. like weird shit. Huh. Yeah, like I I never really like said, like talked about it much because I, I don't, don't think know. you ever told me that one. I don't know if it's real or not. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know, like, if the things that I see are just things that I just see myself and it's just yeah. like nothing that it's truly there or if it's actually like. Especially because of your kid, it. like yeah. I just like I maybe had a vivid imagination, yeah. and I was just thinking I saw that. Or mm-hmm. it's hard to fucking tell because yeah. it's not like you can't go back in time. But like, oh, I did really see that shit. Yeah, like, like our like even going back to like the first story, like there's no telling like if that thing really did touch me or not. Yeah, like you don't like because like you said, you don't know if it was a dream or not. Yeah, yeah. And that's like what's one thing I always like like I think about is like. When I'm going through something scary, is is it that same experience scary, or yeah. if it's like just like your nerves yeah. are built up scary? Because yeah. like there are times where like even now, like when I'm when I bring up stories, I know when I'm telling the truth because I get like shaky. Yeah, you get like tingles. And yeah, shit. yeah, like I get like my voice gets trembly. Yeah, like my body feels like you like kind of like get that. Exp- Feeling back, yeah, this, like so it's had... a weird feeling, and yeah. like um, that's how I know when I'm not bullshitting. Like my mind, my body is like together. It's like I'm not uh, bullshitting myself. Is when I'm shaky. It's like I'm telling the truth. Uh, yeah, I can't believe you made me remember that shit. I uh, forgot about that, dude. Yeah, that whole fucking thing with her. Yeah, and and that's like <laughs> one thing too. Like I've always like like I've always held on to those memories the most. Those scary uh, times. I don't know if my mind tries to block some of it out. Like, like, not to remember. Yeah. Like, when there's so many stories you've remembered reminded Bro, me like, about. Like, yeah. um, like the whole fucking. I don't know what made you like. We talked about when I went to Mexico and the whole saint thing. Yeah. Like, I forgot about that. <laughs> like, uh, and then you remind. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot that happened. And you're like, what? I was all, I forgot. I was like, Jesus. Was all, <laughs> <laughs> or like, uh-huh. like what? It's a trip though. Is like, it's there's so many things that we've experienced together. And, like, yeah. another experience that when we were older, like, in our 18, like, 18, in our adult years yeah. is when we were at your house. Oh. And that's when we heard that fucking thing screaming upstairs in the room. In, in oh, room. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. Didn't she say, like, when you were staying there, too? Bro, it was the creepiest shit yeah. ever. I used to hate laying onto that couch that was under that mirror. Yeah. yeah. Because that mirror would always move. I never said much about it because I didn't want your mom or it moved? your grandma to get freaked out. Yeah, but it moved. Like, how can I explain this? Like, so just picture this is the cross, okay? Yeah. It would go like this. Oh, like someone lifting it? Kind yeah, of? it would pop up here now and then. What the fuck? And then after every time I would do that, I'd always get that feeling like something was up, up on the stairs. Yeah. And like, I, I don't know if that was a portal and it, the upstairs was somewhere where they just had to be. It's weird that you say that because every time when I used to live there, I always felt like someone was like looking over. Yeah. The, the, like where the... Whatever the fuck it is. That, oh, the ledge? Yeah. 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 And, like, um, and, like, the crazy weird thing is, like, like, I don't know if, if anybody was really walking around in those times, yeah. but, like, you'd always hear, like, people walking up on the top. Yeah. Um, even when you're alone, yeah. you, would, you would hear, like, um, I, so, a little backstory, I used to live on the, well, now, I guess, the west side still, but yeah. behind, it was, like, um, like on McMahon with like Rust. Yeah. yeah. Like Rust, like yeah, right behind it. And uh it was a two story house. The way the house was it was like pretty much a square, but you would come in, there was a loft, you could see up there, 
and then there the stairs were right to your right, and it would go up, turn, and there was a landing, and then it would go up back again. And the bathroom was under the oh, stairs. Oh, I fucking hated that bathroom, dude. And every time I would be home alone, I would come use the restroom when I get home, and I would hear someone walking up the stairs because the stairs would go over your head. Yeah. And you would always hear someone walking. I'm like, what the fuck? No one's here. You're just like, like what the fuck? We go outside and like, hey, it's, like I thought it was like my grandma or my mom. Or, no boy home. Hmm. There's been like multiple people that have had experiences. I've had some weird ones there. Huh. Like your grandma told me that one time that the garage opened on her. Yeah. She the, was home alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then she, one time she heard um, people arguing upstairs and no one was there. I don't know. Um, I've heard someone talking before too. And I was like, what the fuck? Go up there. This we should look fun. at the history of the house. And see yeah. if anybody had passed away there. Because the previous owners were still on that security thing. Their yeah. names were still on there. Not the owners of the house. It was like someone else's names. Because what they did is they bought the house and then started renting it out. Oh, okay. So it was just like a, uh, like a, a realty thing. Like, yeah. Just to make money. Yeah. Um, the one thing I... Uh, there's two things... I remember my uncle, you, well, you don't remember Tiger. He's, um, but he used, to, he used to live there for a little bit. There was one time where he went to the bathroom in the middle of the night. He was taking a shit. <laughs> and uh, it was like, he said it was like 2 o'clock in the morning. He was sitting there up the upstairs bathroom. And the door was like right in front of him, like right here. So the doorknob's right here. You can almost like sit on the toilet and then like reach for the door. Yeah. And, um, he was sitting there, and he said the doorknob started, like, turning. And he was like, hey, I'm in here. And his step kept going. And then he, he was like, I'm in here. And then the fucking, the, the little lock thing started turning. Oh, fuck. Yeah, and he was like, he thought it was just me or someone fucking with him or yeah. something. It's like, all right. Like, he said he covered up, and he was, like, waiting for, like, to, the thing to fully get unlocked. Yeah. And he said it, like, went click, and then he just, like, grabbed the door and opened it just to, like, scare us. And no one was there. Oh shit! Yeah, it was there was a one there. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Uh, yeah, it, like that house was a trip. I ain't gonna lie, cause like every time I'd stay over, it would always like take me a minute to fall asleep because I had this overwhelming feeling like I wasn't alone. Yeah, I always felt like that too yeah. when I was there. I always forget about that. Yeah, see those stories that you remind me. Yeah. I don't remember those because there's more ghost story. Yeah, there's. And then uh, one time I was completely alone. I was downstairs. And I was going up the stairs, and I heard the shit my mom showered on. And I was like, I don't think she was, she's not home. And I was like, I heard someone like humming like a song, like they're taking a shower and humming. Uh. And I got closer and closer. I was like creeping in her because I was like, what the fuck? And then, yeah, the shower was on. I got into my mom's room, and the, the bathroom is like on the other corner of the room. And it's like a walk-in bathroom, and then there's a shower and a tub. And I heard someone singing, like just going, mm-hmm, like just showering. And I got close to the, the the fucking bathroom, and I, right when I got to the doorway, I was like, "Hello," and the shower just turned off. Yeah. And I, that fucking freaked the shit out of me. I didn't run away, but instantly just got that like ev- that elevated fear. Yeah. I went to the. I was so afraid to open it or see like a movement in there, <laughs> but I opened the shower door. Sure, the whole the whole fucking thing was wet. What? Yeah. So I want to ask you a question. Do you remember? Our first actual paranormal investigation together. Jesus, mm, get the fuck out of <laughs> No, I don't. What was that? That's when we were at that house specifically. Did we do and it? That's when we heard something in your mom's bathroom, and we took those fucking cameras oh, in there. Oh yeah. And I and I I don't know what we did. I still I can't remember what we I did. Remember. I just remember we filmed in there. I don't remember what we did. And I, I know it's because we heard somebody in the bathroom. Yeah, and in that closet, sometimes the clothes would move, yeah. or my mom would hear someone in there, too. Fuck. Yeah, that, that room, that house is weird. I don't know if someone died there or something, but, yeah, it was pretty creepy. Like, um, I wonder if the owners, because I think they said they lived there for a little bit, but I wonder if they just, because something because was, it was wrong. like, freaky out. Uh, yeah, because, yeah. Because, like, even, like, um fuck was that dog's name what the fuck was his name oh scrappy yeah, yeah. even he would like yeah he would see those things he would just like freeze down yeah. just like stare yeah. and they like especially at the stairs he would just mm-hmm. like you see him perk up ears go up like look up and then yeah. you hear mm-hmm. like him growling yeah and then you don't feel that feeling no more and then he's just like laying down and he's chill yeah. 
So like, God bless, bro. Like I, there's so many experiences we've had together that, to this day, we probably really don't get all of the stories or all the experiences yeah. down because of our memories. Shit. Yeah, like you, you just talking about that house reminded me of all kinds of like the screaming one. Uh, that's the fucking creep. One of the yeah, dude, that scares the shit out of me all the time when I think about that because. We were downstairs, right? That's when we were recording for Aptitude, right? Yeah, so it happened twice then. Bro, oh, fuck. I, I, why didn't we never think about listening to the tracks? I don't know. But, yeah, didn't we hear someone scream? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, that, that, like there's so many experiences yeah. that we've had together that, like, yeah. I can see why we got into fucking paranormal shit. The other story about the screaming lady that was in that house, because I guess, yeah, it happened twice. There's... Second time, I was sleeping in there, and of course my ex at the time, we were both laying on the bed, and our bed was against the wall, and there was a gap, and then there was the closet. So our heads were facing the closet, so we are laying with our legs towards the wall. I don't know why we slept like that, that's kind of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the closet was right there, it was, it was closed. And I was sleeping, and in the middle of the night, like half, like I was like half, was like I was asleep. I woke up to a woman screaming like she was getting fucking murdered from my closet. Oh, shit. Just like, like piercing scream. Like you couldn't even hear anything else besides the scream. Like it was like, I was like, what the fuck? And then she woke up. She was like, she caught like the very end of it. Like it was, ah, and then it stopped. And she was like, what, what the fuck was that? And I was like, something is screaming in our fucking closet yeah. i was like whispering her because i was like i don't want something to come out oh, shit, no. and um and she was like what i was like yeah she was like and then right after i said that dude that was it's weird two things happened so the screaming told her about it she was like what the fuck yeah she was like i kind of heard it i was like asleep and then right after that the bed started shaking oh yeah i remember this part now yeah yeah that fucking creeped me out i've never had that experience before yeah it just felt like like this Fuck that. Just going like that, dude. And I, I've never. I was like, "Is the bed fucking shaking?" She's like, "Yeah." I was like, "What the? F-? I didn't want to get up because I was like, what if it's under the bed?'" <laughs> oh, shit. And then yeah, I just kept doing that for like a good couple of minutes, and then eventually stopped. And then I don't think I went back to sleep. I think I stayed up. Didn't you say there was like a trap door somewhere around there? What's weird is that right in front of the closet, there's loose floorboards right there. And, like, when you pull up the, cl- the, like, I didn't ever want to look, but, yeah, there was, like, loose floorboards. That you could hear it was, like, hollow. Yeah. I don't know if there was, like, something like under. Yeah. yeah. So that was weird. Fuck, dude. <clears throat> like, um, I, I just don't understand, like, why, like, we had those experiences like this. Like, like, uh, like us. Together, <laughs> like, of all times together. Like, yeah. I, I could see, like, of uh, if we, would, like, had these experiences separately and then we came to be like, yeah. Bro, like, this is what happened to me. No, like, we legit had so many experiences together. Like, like uh, one that recently, no, not recently, but, like, one that I can remember that recently happened, like, maybe a few years back was I was drinking at the time. It was me and Rico. We were hanging out outside. Dude. And um, if anybody knows about birds, um, they don't fly during the night. Uh, they're quiet. Unless they're, like, yeah. owls or bats, they're literally yeah. just going to stay yeah in their nest or whatever and um so we were drinking and um he was telling me about his own paranormal experiences and shit and one of them had to do with a duck and it it goes into a story and hope maybe we'll bring him on here to talk about it because i'm I'm not going to talk to his story or anything but um we were sitting there drinking. It was around like maybe one, two in the morning at the time. We were sitting in the front. You hear quack? The quack. fuck? A duck? Yeah. But the weird thing is, it's in front of us in the corner, like by the fence with that big ass bushes yeah. by Paulus. Oh, okay. Yeah. All I hear is quack. And I kept doing it. And I told Rico, I was like, dude, remember that? Remember how you told me that story about that duck? And he's like, yeah. I was like, Listen, man, fucking sure as shit. Quack. Like, dude, I've never seen anybody get so fucking pale in the night, in the dark. I saw Rico's fucking skin go from, like, this pink to dark ass fucking, I mean, like, bright white. I mean, and he, let's go inside. Let's go inside. And, like, like if he tells you guys that story, uh, you guys will understand 
that was fucking freaky to hear that shit. Yeah. And damn, dude, like that that right there was probably like like as an adult it was one of the most like craziest experiences I've had because it was like literally we're talking about a, the situation that happened, the story, and then what the noises were, and yeah. then you hear that same fucking noise. Like that's fucking weird. Yeah, that's the, that's it's the crazy part about it. It's like, it's like whatever that thing me? was no. was li- yeah, yeah. Li- listening. Yeah. And uh, ever since then, I never really like talked about like scary shit like that after like yeah. when we're drinking and stuff. <laughs> Remember when we sent Mitch and his buddy to fucking go in that haunted house and his uh, uh, on the live stream? Remember? Oh yeah, <laughs> that was funny as fuck. That's fucked up. Bro. That was another thing that, that was kind of like part of the paranormal world when we first started, but. Um, well, so before we ended up the podcast, we're at an hour right now. Oh, okay. But um, what's the scariest experience you had during like the pitch dark paranormal stuff? Like, like together or personal? Just like whatever you think is the most like scary experience for you. While we were doing okay, that. I'm gonna give you two. Okay. So as a group, the most scariest experience that I've had is with when me and Michael were at St. James. And the the weird thing about it is, like, everything was fine until he started staring at door number 18. Once, as soon as he started staring at that fucking door. That's was, the like, iconic door yeah, in that place. And it was yeah. like, it was like, he opened something for himself there. And the reason why I say that is because you see him get scratched. Like, I mean, I don't fucking see it happening, but I, you see the scratches appear. Yeah. And it, it's like they get darker, and it doesn't get lighter; it gets what, darker. Tell us, like, so what you guys were walking that? What happened? So okay, so we we pass Annie Oakley's room. Me and him are talking, just laughing, yeah. like just talking bullshit. Like, I want to say I still have the film. Yeah. But we're just talking bullshit. We're going past Annie Oakley's room, and then we're passing by that chair. And I'm turning this way with the camera. I don't mean to get out of the camera view, but I turned this way with the camera, and I'm video taping that area where that chandelier and that lamp is and yeah. where that whatever it is so we're there and i'm videotaping that and then all of a sudden i just look to my right camera's still pointed this way dude's like beamed out at that door like he's got a head. if he has laser eyes he's burning her hole to that fucking door yeah and then all of a sudden stop talking yeah quiet huh. all of a sudden you just hear ah oh, i got scratched and you know how Pickle's voice yeah. is They're like, what the fuck? Like, bullshit. Yeah. And then you pick, I pick up his shirt, and I'm like, holy fuck, he did get scratched. Remember yelling for us. Yeah, because you see one come up, and then two. And then when you guys show up, that's when all three of them are there. It's like an A shape. Yeah. yeah it's like like that, and then like it's kind of like a weird shape, like an A shape. Yeah, like and it's the craziest thing ever because it, it just appears right there. Yeah. It's not like it just happens. Or like we just somehow just saw his shirt lift up and then we saw it no yeah. it happened right in front of me he said it hurt i pulled up his shirt i see them coming up like that's the weird. welts of the scratch that's fucking weird because like when i looked it up i told did i tell you guys about that huh. like like the shape of you know, the scratches on his huh. well um there's actually like a because it kind of coincides with everything that we're seeing remember something was following him yeah we saw a goat man yeah well the shape of the A is actually a symbol for this cult that actually we used to worship a goat demon. Oh, shit. So it makes sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's probably one of the, like, my most scariest experiences with somebody in a group. What's funny is that, like, that was, like, the first, like, 20 minutes of you being part of the paranormal, paranormal stuff. Paranormal, yeah. Part of the pitch strike <laughs> paranormal crew, yeah. yeah. You didn't even that's start like, yet. We were just no. setting up. Uh-uh. Because <laughs> we had just put all the cameras in the room. And we were waiting for We were just doing pre-walk off. around, yeah, because yeah, he was turning around the lights. And I want to say he just finished that hallway, and he was going where you guys were turning off those lights. Yeah, that big, like, Because when I yeah. When I remember screaming that, that's when he runs out. He's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we're like, whoa, what the fuck? And then yeah. I get it. Yeah, then he's like, what happened? I was like, he's like, oh, yeah, that happens sometimes. So I was like, <laughs> and then my personal own experience, probably when it had to be where um, it was in Gila, and it's where I saw somebody in that fucking cell. Which one? That's when I was sitting there by myself. Oh, yeah, I forgot. And I yeah. fucking saw somebody peek out, like yeah. put his shoulder out, and then I just fucking... 
I I did not say that. I was like, fuck that, Cameron, where you at? <laughs> I'm over then, here. Oh, yeah, and you said something um, when you were doing the spirit box by yourself. Remember when something tapped you or something? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So I don't, I don't remember, like, I'd have to go back and watch the episode because I don't remember what I said. But I remember I had asked a question about being comfortable or something like that. Mm. And then that's when I feel this. And I'm like, I, I thought it was Cameron. Telling you, like, yeah. stop. Yeah. So that's when I pick up my headphone and I'm like, yeah. And he don't say nothing, so I'm like, okay. Yeah. And I, I think that's when I'm in the cell, right? Yeah, you're. A, he's across over there yeah. at those like the isolation area. Yeah. You're by yourself in level two. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, dude. That, that that's probably like, that's probably has to be like the most scariest time I've ever been there because every other time, like, I, yeah, I remember maybe we were like the second time we were at Down on You haven't seen that yet. I'm not gonna spoil yeah. it. So that experience by myself, sure, but. Yeah, those two were probably like the top scariest yeah. moments. So I remember you said you were sitting in the cell and then camera was out or, or something and you said you saw a face or something? Yeah. Yeah, that one? So, it, yeah, so that, that that shit's probably like top scariest thing that's happened so far. That uh, one had a lot of evidence because that's when I actually caught something on my camera. Remember when I actually got a... Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, because the first flash, I didn't get nothing and then Pickles is in that same spot where we actually caught it. He was like, yeah, I just saw a flash of a guy standing there. I was like, really? And so I took another picture, and then sure enough, that's what the same, where he's like, that's exactly where he was standing. And it was like, yeah, some bald guy, like, fucking there trying to, like, fuck with the rim pod. So, like, <laughs> it, it's it, it's got its ups and downs. It's fucking intense, man. Yeah. Um, hopefully, um, I'll be back on, and we can do some more um, experiences, and then hopefully we'll have some more uh, ev- yeah. uh, investigations done at that time. Because yeah. and- ho- hopefully... We get enough new places that we don't have to just release in October. Yeah. Because, like, if we get maybe, like, four f- more places, I can, we can start releasing them. Yeah. So we don't, you guys don't have to wait. Yeah. It's just a matter of how many places let us. <laughs> oh, shit. But, uh, that's, the, that's the difficult part is finding an area and then not only that, but having the means to get to the area. Yeah, because most of the places that they're, like, welcoming arms are places that are not close. Yeah, <laughs> so, they're either not close or if they're close, they charge a, a little bit. Yeah, like it's weird. Like the whole East Coast is just full of places that welcome that shit. Yeah, and it sucks that we don't live that close. Oh, <laughs> shit. It's like yeah. most uh, of them are like then, plus a day drive. hours away. Yeah, and I was say this. Yeah, and away. then if we have to get a plane flight, that's another fucking yeah. four hundred yeah. bucks. So oh, shit, fun. expense like crazy. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Like if you guys were to share this episode, leave a like, leave a comment, and tell your people about yeah. us. We'll be able to go to experience these places for you. Yeah. Now, um, and, and, you know, not just be stuck in little areas or have limited, uh, uh, what do you call it? Limited uh, fucking content to put out because it's hard because getting funding is just sometimes impossible. Yeah, it's mostly <laughs> out of our own. It's always out of our yeah. own pockets. Like, as if you guys shared it, we got enough followers, you guys would be part of growing this channel and be able to, like, have us do more stuff yeah for you guys and so you want it, to it's all up to you guys if you want to see more of the paranormal stuff it's all up to you guys to get this channel moving um we do appreciate those of you who are in, are with us now have and been have with been us, with uh, us for years and you know i hope i hope that joe and cameron can take this 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 podcast and and you know boom the channel up Along with eyes interviews with uh, all of our local bands uh, in New Mexico, um, and hopefully, you know, they're going to be going on tour, and hopefully, they can get some more footage out in California, mm-hmm. Oregon, Washington, Texas, Colorado. Uh, hopefully, we go on a ghost tour too. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that, that, that's a dream there. That's but, like just doing like a run of different places every night after night. Like fuck, that'd, be, that'd be crazy shit. <laughs> But until then, guys, uh, thank you for watching Let's Get Paranormal. I'm your co-host. Not co-host. God damn. I'm a <laughs> guest host, uh, no. uh, Kyle. Um, like I said before, if you guys want to watch the Paranormal episodes, go to the channel. Check it out. Mm-hmm. If you guys want to watch the other podcast, check it out. Um, watch Cloud9. <sighs> Anything. We yeah. have all kinds of videos. There's all kinds of shit. But thanks for watching Let's Get Paranormal. Kyle, like you just said, he was an awesome guest. We got to hear a bunch of stories that maybe you guys haven't heard yet. Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully he comes back yeah, <laughs> again I'm, soon. I'm probably gonna come back. I just yeah, give, give it a few. So yeah, that I'm not. <laughs> 
dolling y'all ears out. <laughs> right, but thanks for watching. Uh, stay spooky.